In this video, I'm going to talk about why auditing the payroll cycle is important. When you think about large-scale financial statement frauds, you probably think about things like improper revenue recognition, and you probably don't think about payroll liabilities. But that doesn't mean there's no fraud in the payroll cycle. In fact, you can have a lot of fraud in the payroll cycle, and this is definitely something that the auditor should focus on. So I want to give you a few examples of the types of fraud you might see in the payroll cycle, and then we'll talk about these more in the videos to come. Let's start with fictitious employees. If you have a dishonest person who works in your payroll department, they could potentially add a fictitious employee, otherwise known as a ghost employee, to the payroll. So let's say they add someone named Tom Smith to the company's payroll. Tom doesn't actually exist. Tom wasn't hired by the company. Uh, Tom is just a name that that dishonest person made up. They add that person to the payroll, and then they have Tom getting paid, let's say, $1,000 a week. And then what happens is that dishonest person is going to take the $1,000, right? Because Tom doesn't even exist. So Tom was just added to the payroll and the fraudster is going to steal that $1,000 that is supposedly going to Tom Smith. A related fraud would be instead of just making someone up like Tom Smith, just some fake person and adding them to the payroll, would be to keep someone who has been terminated or fired from the company and just keep them on the payroll. Okay, so let's say Susie actually worked for the company and was fired, instead of removing Susie from the payroll, you keep Susie on the payroll and then just take the checks, right? So let's say Susie had been making $1,200 a week. Okay, so that dishonest person in payroll would just leave Susie on the payroll and then take the $1,200 that's going to Susie every week, right? So Susie doesn't even know what's going on. Now, Another thing you could have is issues with overpaying actual employees. Okay, so these aren't people who were fired that didn't get removed from payroll. This isn't fictitious or ghost employees. Now we're talking about actual employees and we're talking about them being paid at either an unauthorized rate. Like for example, let's say that they're supposed to make $20 an hour and they're actually being paid 25 or they're being paid for time that they didn't work. Okay, so they're saying that they actually worked 40 hours when in fact they only worked 25. And so we will talk about that more in the videos to come of how you would go about dealing with that, but that's a potential issue. Uh, incorrect classification of labor costs. This is a particularly an issue if you have a manufacturer and you're trying to figure out, well, is this a, a product cost or a period cost? But that affects whether the cost is gonna go to inventory because remember with a manufacturer, product costs first go to inventory and then they're expensed through cost of goods sold when the inventory is sold. But period costs are expensed when they're incurred. Okay, so if you incorrectly classify labor, labor costs uh, for a manufacturer that could affect their inventory and their cost of goods sold. And if it's affecting their cost of goods sold, it could affect their net income. Okay, Underpaying third parties, there are a number of third parties that money is withheld from the employee's check and then sent to those third parties. Uh, for example, uh, to federal income tax in the United States. Okay, So uh, if the employee does some work, uh, the company withholds uh, federal income tax. And then if that uh, employee is subject to state income tax, they withhold that as well. Uh, there's also payroll taxes, social security tax, Medicare tax, and so forth for employees in the U.S. So uh, sometimes when companies get in financial problem, uh, financial trouble, uh, they, they pocket that money. They do not turn it over to the government as they should. Uh, and so that can lead to significant problems for the company. And so this is something that you want to watch out for. Also, disclosures, uh, particularly related to executive compensation, because companies, uh, particularly publicly traded companies in the U.S., have to make extensive disclosures about executive compensation and or share-based compensation, okay? Share-based compensation comes into play because if you're granting someone options, the question is, well, what is the fair value of those options? And you use a pricing model to calculate the fair value, but there's an element of estimation and judgment involved. And whenever there's estimation and judgment involved in calculating an accounting number, there's a potential for fraud, okay? So we'll talk about those more in the videos to come. Now, for right now, what I want you to know is that companies really need to ensure uh, the, the, the following things, and they can set up internal controls, and then the auditor would go over those internal controls and, and so forth. But the, really here, this top line, all of this is important, but we really want to focus on making sure that when compensation is being paid to employees, that they're actual employees, they're not fictitious employees, they're not people who were fired long ago and kept on the payroll, actual employees at authorized rates, okay, they're being paid the amount they're supposed to be paid for actual time work. So if we're talking about our, our hourly employees, uh, if they're saying they work 40 hours, that they actually worked 40 hours. Okay, so actual employees 
authorized rates, actual time work. Now, we also want to make sure gross pay, payroll deductions, whether it be for retirement contributions, taxes, whatever, and then net pay, which is the gross pay after uh, taking out the payroll deductions. We want to make sure that has been correctly calculated. Uh, we want to make sure if, if the employee has any payroll deductions, anything coming out, okay, that those were actually authorized. There should be some paperwork for that. We want to make sure the payroll costs are cor correctly classified. Again, uh, was this a sales commission expense? Is that why the employee was being paid? Uh, was this uh, some cost related to somebody working on an assembly line for a manufacturer, in which case uh, it would be a product cost. So thinking about product versus period costs uh, and any withholding. So if you're withholding money uh, from the employee's check that that's actually submitted to the third party, for example, the federal government in the U.S. Uh, in a timely manner. If it's not submitted, again, that could lead to interest. It could lead to fines and penalties. Um it could even lead to seizure of the company's assets. Like if the company does not turn over taxes that they were supposed to turn over to the government, the government could come and take their assets and, and lock up the business and take the business from the business owner if they're not turning over the taxes. So this is this is serious. Okay? And then we want to make sure there's proper disclosure made, any executive and or share based compensation. Uh, one of the last things that an auditor would do in an audit is go through a disclosure checklist to make sure that all uh, dis proper disclosures were made. Now in the videos to come, we're gonna discuss the six steps for auditing the payroll cycle, starting with the activities that make up the company's payroll cycle, all the way through to performing substantive procedures. And if you'd like to receive the PDF guide I used to make this video, you can sign up to my email list using the link in the description section below. If you'd like to receive the PDF guide immediately, you can become a supporter on Patreon.